Hey, what's up, y'all? This is William, the Permaculture Consultant. Remember, this Saturday, May 4th, is going to be the East Texas Homesteader Group Meetup type thing. It's going to be in uh, Grumpy's Garden Club in Gladewater, Texas, from 10 a.m. to noon. So I hope to see you guys there. Now let's get on with the video. We're going to be planting sweet potatoes. Now the two sweet potato, well, I guess I gave away part of the surprise here, but we're gonna be doing two sweet potato beds. This one right here, which was the failed carrot bed that kind of failed, kind of didn't. They're growing, they're germ they germinated, but I'd rather have sweet potatoes. So we're gonna go with that. And um, this was the bed that had uh, kale and beets in it. And now the kale in the middle, as you can see, popped up pretty well but the beets did not so we're going to be planting sweet potatoes along the outside of this kale right here and then we'll just let the sweet potatoes out compete the kale in the future but the first thing we're going to do is chop down all this clover and get it ready for the sweet potatoes now this first bed is going to be the sweet potatoes that i started in um a video I did a while back, now it just so happens, I did that video and I started those sweet potatoes so that way I would have sweet potatoes on time, but it turns out I waited a little bit too long and now I'm gonna have sweet potatoes at the same time they came in in the store. So this bed is gonna be the sweet potatoes that I started and then this bed is gonna be sweet potatoes that I'm gonna buy tomorrow at the store. I'm gonna do this bed first and then we'll worry about this bed later. Alrighty, so step number one is gonna be Sharpen the scythe. And I'm gonna use this to chop down this clover because honestly, some of these sweet potato slips that I started is shorter than uh, most of this clover. So I don't want these sweet potatoes to be outshaded by the clover. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop this stuff down and then I'm gonna go show you my, guy, my uh, sweet potato slips. Now, part of the reason I'm not keeping this clover as a ground cover is because my sweet potatoes are actually going to act as way thicker of a ground cover than this will. Plus, the sweet potato ground clover is also um, cover, not clover, is uh, also edible. So, I will be taking preference to that ground cover over this clover ground cover. But it's going to act as a great mulch until the sweet potato gets established. And I'm just taking nice, soft, gentle strokes. I don't want to accidentally rip up any part of the bed or anything like that. I just want to cut the clover down. Part of me wants to just add all this to a compost pile. This stuff would be awesome in a compost pile. thing I've changed in my mind I am actually gonna harvest this stuff up and put it off to the side to dry so I can make compost out of it getting material as good as this is pretty hard to find later on in the season so if I can get it and dry it out and put it off to the side I can get it ready for later compost piles so probably shouldn't have spread it out as well as I did now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is broad forking broad forking is a subsoiling technique that doesn't destroy the uh soil structure but instead breaks packs past any compaction layers and um allows water and nutrients and life to infiltrate down below also roots this is going to help increase the size and overall growth of my sweet potato So I got the beds trimmed down and then brought forked and now it looks like it's about to rain, which honestly wouldn't feel the worst thing in the world. Um, so these are the sweet potatoes that I uh, 
grew from home. And I basically just uh, grew this, check out the video if you wanna know how I grew those slips. But after that, I just plucked them off and then put them in a couple of jars of uh, water and then let them sit in the window until they started producing roots. And now I'm going to go ahead and plant these bad boys in this first bed. The other bed is going to be the sweet potato slips that I pick up tomorrow. They're going to be the store bought um, versions and we're gonna see which ones do best. So I'm gonna plant these in two rows down this bed about 18 inches apart or 12 to 18 inches apart. And first things first, I need my forked stick. This one right here almost looks like it was meant to be a sweet potato plant and stick break that off I honestly don't know what all the honking is about in the background sorry guys um, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drop it on the ground and then I'm gonna use my forked stick straddle it and push it down in there I guess this would help if I had some softer soil all right new plan I'm gonna use a pointed stick and I'm gonna use it to shove a hole in the soil first. And then I'll go ahead and drop my sweet potato slip in. I'm gonna poke a hole and drop my slip in. I guess I'm gonna to have to develop my soil a little bit more before I can just go ahead and poke it in like Danny and Wanda do. Also, their, their soil is quite a bit more sandy than mine is. Mine is pretty heavy clay. Alrighty, so I only had just enough to do one side of these beds. So I am definitely going to have to buy some at the store tomorrow so I can finish out the other half of this bed and then also this second bed over here. So next year when I do sweet potatoes, I will be starting them much earlier and I will be starting many, many more. Alrighty, we're back. This is the next day. Um, yeah, yesterday was a little bit disappointing. I didn't have nearly enough sweet potato slips or as many as I thought I would need um, for this bed. So I went to the store this morning and I got a bunch more sweet potato slips. In fact, I think I got like 175 slips total. So that should take care of my sweet potato fix for the year until next year when it's time to grow some more. In which case I will start three times as many as I did this year. So we're gonna continue on. I'm gonna plant the other side of this bed right here and then I'm gonna plant this bed entirely with sweet potatoes. And then honestly, I might even well, no, I was thinking I might clear a bed, but I don't really have any beds that I really want to clear right now. So if I need to, I'll find some other places around the property to plant some sweet potatoes. So it's cool that it rained uh, today because now I get to show you guys the forked stick method. So you're going to take your stick and preferably it's going to have a U or a fork in the tip of it right there. And you want it pretty thin. And then you're going to take your sweet potato slip. And then you're going to take that slip and you're going to drop it on the ground. And then you're going to take your forked stick and you're going to poke it down into the soil until your sweet potato is sticking up just like that. Try to get it a little bit deeper than that, but yeah, that's how the forked stick method goes. And now it's just time to do that along the rest of this side of the bed. Yeah, make sure you get a stick that won't break on you. Oh, for those that were wondering, the sweet potatoes on this side are gonna be Centennial, and the sweet potatoes on that side are the homegrown ones. Now, in this bed right here, I'm gonna be doing the Vardaman sweet potatoes. Um, and like I said, I got Vardaman, Centennial, and Georgia Jet. They were actually out of the uh, Beauregard, so I didn't wind up with any of those. Oh, there's a worm. There's two worms, actually. Dang. I don't know if these uh, vardamins are going to turn out so well. They keep breaking off every time I try to push them in.
All right, so I've got about 75 of these slips left. So what I think I might do is actually plant some just along this back. There's the last perennial bed. It's kind of hard to see with all the green. This is the last perennial bed, and then there's a space, and then there's this uh, gravel pad where the greenhouse used to be. I might plant some of these sweet potatoes just in this empty space over here. It has been broad forked before and a little bit cultivated, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. It's already loose soil. Now, the only other things that I have planted in this, well, actually, yeah, I do have comfrey planted in here, so I'll have to be careful and I'll have to harvest that comfrey before I go and harvest these sweet potatoes. But I'm just gonna use also my fork and stick to clear some surrounding weeds. And I'm gonna drop it in. Oh, it didn't exactly fall where I wanted it to. I'm gonna drop it in and then just push. Fork and stick method. Go check out Danny and Wanda. They have a lot of good information, especially when it comes to sweet potatoes. In fact, I think they have a whole sweet potato booklet you can get and it'll teach you everything from starting sweet potatoes to um to harvesting them to curing them all that stuff well this is going to take care of like what 10 sweet potato plants for me so i'm going to need to find other locations to plant my sweet potatoes now i could plant some on the swales um but the downside of that is that harvesting them is something I don't really want to do. I don't really want to go digging up anything from the mound of the swale. So I might, I might just use it as like a soil building vine layer in the swale. Because I'd much rather sweet potato vines. I can eat the, the vine part. So there is that. But I'd much rather sweet potato vines take over than that other crap that takes over over there. So that might be a place where I put a lot of these sweet potato slips, or I might bring the excess just over to my father-in-law's and see if he has any space for them as well. Alrighty, so I decided I'm gonna hit the backside of the swale mound as well. And um, yeah, this will just be like an edible vine layer that I can use and a ground cover, a seasonal ground cover. It's not gonna last forever. It's gonna go away as soon as there's a first frost. But I wanna see how well these will do on the swale mound because this is a much better ground cover. A ground cover I can feed to my pigs and future chickens and future sheep. And if I leave the sweet potatoes in the ground and I never harvest them, then they should just keep coming back unless we have a super hard freeze, in which case I'll have to reseed them. And I might as well plant some on this swale mound as well. This mound is super bare. So let's go ahead and get some sort of ground cover around it and get it taken care of. I don't know why, but this, this swale back here had very, very bad, very hard clay soil. And even after all these years, nothing really took over this bed. This one was super easy to clear. There was nothing really that established. So maybe getting some sweet potatoes planted in the ground will help bring some life to this soil. And I guess I could also plant some in the future paddock spots for the pigs as well. There's no reason I can't get some food already growing for when the pigs hit this property. I'll put a couple in over here just to see how they do. So that way, whenever my pigs hit this spot over here, they'll either have some vines to, to graze on or some tubers or maybe even a combination of both given this location they'll probably just have some vines to eat if this stuff takes and if this stuff grows but if i go further back into the woods then they might get there in time for some tubers there we go got a whole bunch of sweet potatoes planted right here this will be a nice little flute food plot for them all right, y'all, so that's about it for the sweet potatoes. In about 120 days, hopefully, I'll have some sweet potatoes. The leftovers I'm going to bring over to my uh, father-in-law, see if he wants to plant any. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you guys this weekend at the um, first East Texas Homesteaders uh, get-together. That'll be awesome. That'll be May 4th. Remember, that's May 4th, 10 a.m. to noon. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys there. We will have some more in the future if you're not able to make it to this one, so don't worry. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you.